Hello everyone, welcome to this channel, Word of God is Truth. My name is Cherie, and today what we're talking about is titled Worse Than Sodom and Gomorrah, Part 1, referring to the church, and this is going to be focusing on the Levite priest and the woman or the concubine. This is to follow up on my video that I did about my testimony for sexual sin. I said that I was going to talk about the sexual sin that Israel got themselves involved in that <laughs> produced the wrath of God upon them. So we're going to look at what they were doing. We're going to find out by doing this where we got some of our sex practices from that we think are normal today. Part two is going to be focusing on Baal Peor and Ashtoreth worship because that sheds a whole bunch of stuff as well. After we learn all of those things from those two videos, then I'm going to do one talking about things concerning sex and the defilement that we have brought in as Christians because we learned sex practices from the world, from the kingdom of darkness, just like Israel did. There's nothing new under the sun. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I already mentioned that we're focusing on a Levite priest. So let's start at Judges 19 verse 1. I'm not going through all the verses. I'm just touching on what we need to be able to get to the perversion that was happening in Israel. And backstory, they have already come Come out of Egypt. They've already defeated the people in the promised land. So it is now theirs. All of the people's land has been allotted to each tribe. So they're already situated and all these things like that. So this is where we are. So they're in the promised land. They're thriving. They're flourishing. And this is what we have happening. So Moses is no longer with them. Joshua is no longer with them. They don't have a judge at this point among them. So everybody is basically doing whatever they want. They feel like it's a free for all because there's no one that's over them. They don't recognize that God is over them. So let's go into it. So Judges 19, 1, it says, And it came to pass in those days when there was no king in Israel, that there was a certain Levite sojourning on the side of Ephraim, who took to him a concubine out of Bethlehem, Judah. And it says Bethlehem. Judah because Bethlehem was in the territory of the tribe of Judah. So that's why it's together. So let's break down that word concubine. That word concubine is made up of two Hebrew words. The first Hebrew word basically means a female, a wife, or a woman, all of that. But the second one, which is the Hebrew word pelegesh, means a concubine, paramour, and the strong says the same thing. So, so I had to look up what the paramour is, and it is a lover, specifically an illicit or secret lover. And this is coming from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. This is undoubtedly a woman that is a concubine that is an illicit lover. So that's what we take away from this. And I had to break that down because when I was reading over this, knowing that I was going to go over it, it gets a little bit confusing because in this next passage of scriptures, it's going to mention the Levite as her husband, even though it still calls her concubine. So I just want to keep this clear. This is not her husband. She is a concubine. She is in a relationship with him. And so he is acting as a husband, but he is not her husband. And keep in mind that when Jesus was talking to the woman at the well, he said to her that she had many husbands. The people that you sleep with are like husbands because you become one in the spirit. So I believe that's why the language is like this, although it's not actually her husband. So let's keep on going. Judges 19 verses two through three. And his concubine played the whore against him and went away from him unto her father's house to Bethlehem, Judah, and was there four whole months. And her husband arose and went after her to speak friendly unto her and to bring her again, having his servant with him and a couple of asses. And she brought him into her father's house. And when the father of the damsel saw him, he rejoiced to meet him. And his father-in-law, the damsel's father, retained him and abode with him three days. So he did eat and drink and lodge there. So from that passage, what I want you to note that I thought was very interesting is that he said that he was speaking kindly to her. So once we get to the other part, you'll understand why this kind of sticks out a little bit because it kind of means that he wasn't that kind to her. And so to persuade her to come back, he was speaking kindly to her. And also note that she ran away from him into the arms of another man. And instead of returning to him, she ran home to her father. So this might show some type of treatment outside of this woman's character. It might show maybe some abuse that was happening or just wrong treatment. We're going to see a little bit later how this Levite was actually treating her. And that's 
when we get to the gruesome part. So now we're at the part where this Levite priest is trying to leave the father's house at this point. And the father keeps bidding him to stay, like stay another night, stay another night. So this went on a couple nights. And so finally this Levi is like, nope, I'm not staying anymore. We're going to get on the road. And it was getting late. So the father was trying to discourage them from leaving, but the Levite left anyways against the advice of the father. So that's where we are now. So Judges chapter 19, verse 9 through 12. And it says, and when the man arose to depart, he and his concubine and his servant, his father-in-law, the damsel's father, said unto him, behold, now the day draweth towards evening. I pray you tarry all night. Behold, the day groweth to an end. Lodge here that thine heart may be merry. And tomorrow get you early on your way that thou mayest go home. But the man would not tarry that night, but he rose up and departed and came over against Jebus, which is Jerusalem. And there were with him two asses saddled, his concubine also with him also. I want to pause right there. So Jerusalem, this area in Jerusalem hadn't been captured yet. So this place was still called Jebus, where Jebusite resided there. So they were not a part of the tribes of Israel. So I just wanted to add that there. So let's keep on going to 11. It says, and when they were by Jebus, the day was far spent and the servant said unto his master, come, I pray thee and let us turn into this city of the Jebusites and lodge in it. And his master said unto him, we will not turn aside hither to the city of a stranger that is not of the children of Israel. We will pass over to Gibeah. So it was a custom that the Israelites would not stay in the house of someone that weren't believers. It was like against their customs. And so he didn't even want to lodge in this city that wasn't a part of the territory of the 12 tribes of Israel. And I keep this in mind, this city that did not know God would have treated them more kindly than this city that they're about to go into that belonged to one of the tribes of Israel. So now we're at Judges 19, verse 14 through 15. And so they passed on and went their way. And when the sun went down upon them, when they were by Gebel, which belonged to Benjamin. So now they're in the territory of Benjamin. And they turned aside thither to go in and to lodge in Gebeah. And when he went in, he sat down in the street of the city, for there was no man that took him into his house to lodging. So know this, another custom of the people of Israel was to invite people into their houses. And now they're in one of the, the territories of the, one of the tribes of Israel, and no one has invited them into their home to take up lodging. And they have everything that they need. They don't need anything from anyone. So this is in some of the other verses that I didn't go over, but I want to keep this short. And so so then finally, a man comes out who is also from Ephraim to offer them to come and stay with him. So Judges 19, 20. And the old man said, peace be with thee. However, let all thy wants lie upon me. Only lodge not in the street. So this is like a warning here. Like you don't want to stay out in these streets. You, It's best that you come with me. So the Levite opts to go with this man. And so now they're in the house. They're eating, drinking. Everything's good. So here we start. Now, as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial beset the house round about and beat at the door and spake to the master of the house, the old man saying, bring forth that man that came into thine house that we may know him. And so I'm going to pause there. Whenever the Bible says to know someone in this type of way, they're talking about sexually. These men of Benjamin came to the door to beat it down because they wanted to know this Levite priest that was sojourning in their territory sexually. So let's go to 23. It says, and the man, the master of the house, went out to them and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you, do not do so wickedly, seeing that this man is come into mine house. Do not this folly. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Them I will bring out now, and humble ye them, and do with them what seemeth good unto you. But unto this man, do not so vile a thing. Isn't that crazy? Doesn't this sound familiar where men of a city were beating down the door to get to some men that they saw enter a city? And didn't the man in this house also offer up his daughters to protect the men that they had taken in that were actually angels. Doesn't this all sound familiar? But the worst part is these are people that are supposed to know God. That's why I call this worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. So let's take a quick detour over to Genesis 19, 1, 11 to see how similar these stories are because it's literally almost verbatim the same thing happening, the same spirit that was at work there that was a pagan 
Americans is now working in this territory of Israel and this tribe of Benjamin. Let's read Genesis 19 verse 1 through 11. It says, And there came two angels to Sodom at the even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet. And ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house. And he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. There it is again. And Lot went out at the door unto them, and shut the door after him, and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out to you, and you do to them as good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore against the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. It is literally almost the exact same thing, but the difference is this is happening with the people of God. And it says they went further. And so of course, we don't know what would have happened because these men were struck with blindness. These men of every age, it said, from every part of this city, from every quarter. Sodom means burning or to scorch. And the book of Judges, where we see Israel doing the exact same thing, it called them sons of Belial. Who is Belial? Belial was a deity that was actually worshipped, but it means worthlessness, worthless, good for nothing, unprofitable, unprof wicked, ruin, and destruction. Go down, down to the Strongs, it says without profit, worthless, destruction, wickedness, and the other words it was translated to is Belial, evil, naughty, ungodly, men, wicked. So there's that. So let's keep on going back to the story of Judges, the people of God, and see what they do in this exact same situation where they're beating down this man that just took in the Levite and his concubine. Let's see how they treat them. Judges 19.25, it says, but the men would not hearken to him. So the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them, and they knew her and abused her all the night until the morning. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. So this Levite sacrificed his concubine, threw her out there to the wolves. They abused her all night. And now the sun is up and they let her go. Judges 19 verse 26 through 28. It says, and then came the woman into the dawning of the day and fell down at the door of the man's house where her Lord was till it was light. And her Lord rose up in the morning and opened the doors of the house and went out to go his way. And behold, the woman, his concubine was fallen down at the door of the house and her hands were upon the threshold. And he said unto her, up, oh, let us be going. But none answered. Then the man took her up upon the ass. The man arose up and got him unto his place. This concubine, this woman was abused all night by the men of Benjamin. They let her go only at the dawning of the sun. She crawls and makes her way to the doorstep of where they were lodging temporarily. And it said that, that this Levi priest rose up in the morning and went to go his way. Wasn't worried about her. Wasn't thinking about her anything. And he just happens to find her lying on this doorstep. And he just says to her, up, oh, let us be going. That tells you how this Levite priest treated this woman that was under his care, the concubine. Insight to why this woman would run away, run to another man and run back to her father's house. And this explains why he came to her father's house speaking kindly unto her. He didn't try and tend to her, nurture her, anything. Didn't even realize she was dead on the doorstep. Just said, up, oh, let us be going. Pretty crazy, pretty wicked. And this is someone that is supposed to be a priest, supposed to be an especially sanctified tribe that dealt with the sacrifices and the offerings and, and the cleansing of the temples and all those kind of things like that. This is who is doing this. This is how fallen Israel has become while they're in the promised land. So let's look at Judges 19 verses 29 through 30. And it says, and when he was coming to his house, he took a knife and laid hold onto his concubine and divided her up together with her bones into 12 pieces and sent her into all the coast of Israel. And it was so that all that saw it said there was no such deed done nor seen from the day that the children
children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt unto this day. Consider of it, take advice, and speak your minds. So this Levite priest took the, the dead body of this concubine to his home, cut her up, and sent pieces of her limbs to each tribe to ring the bell, to raise the alarm, and say, hey, this tribe of Benjamin just did this to me. Something needs to be done about this. So the little that we can take away from the this short piece that we have is that this Levite priest is in error. A priest is supposed to be the man of one wife. We see that there is prostitution happening by the, the way that this woman is a concubine and she is a part of the tribes of Israel. So we know that prostitution is happening in this promised land after they've witnessed all the miracles that God has done, everything that's been given, all the people that have been defeated around them, but all this stuff is still happening. And not only this, in the chapters before this, I believe it's in the tribe of Dan, Dan found a Levite priest as well and they set him over a shrine to another God. And so there's idol worship happening here. There's prostitution. The Levite priests are defiled and in sexual immorality. So there's all kinds of stuff happening. There's probably no sin that is not happening right now in this place. But one of the themes that is said throughout Judges, I believe it says it two or three times, but I just have two scriptures here. But the, the theme was that people began to do what was right in their own eyes. And this is also what we are doing right now as the people of God when it comes to the way that we're living our lives. We're doing what we think is right, not what the word of God says is right, not what a holy God has decreed. We're doing what we think is right in our own eyes sexually. We've brought in all these things from the world, but it is right in our own eyes. We're not thinking about how holy our God is, how much order our God has put to everything that he has decreed for us. So let's read these two scriptures. So Judges 17, 6. In those days, there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Judges 21, 25. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did what was right in his own eyes. So as soon as people felt like no one was watching them, they just thought it was a free for all to do whatever they wanted. And Moses did not enter into this place. We already know that. But Moses said in Deuteronomy 12, verse eight through nine, it says, ye shall not do after all the things that we do here this day. Every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. For ye are not as yet come to the rest in the inheritance which the Lord your God is giving you. So the people haven't even made it into the promised land yet, but they're already sinning and acting, going buck wild. And Moses is like, wait a minute, you're not supposed to be doing what's right in your own eyes. We haven't even made it into the promised land yet. You shouldn't be doing these things. And so here they are in the promised land, still doing what is right in their own eyes, kindling the wrath of God against them. Isaiah 5, 21 says, woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. That's where we are. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 5, it says, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitor, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. This is where we are. We are in the last days. They are indeed perilous, and everything that is in this passage of scriptures has already come to pass. We are lovers of pleasures more than we are lovers of God. If someone says to us, okay, this isn't permitted for Christians to be doing because we're lovers of pleasure, we're going to try and justify that say, no, we're under grace. We don't have to stop doing this. This is permitted. So that is the mindset that we have as Christians. We are high-minded, can't be corrected on things because we have it set in our mind. No, this is okay. I can do this. We should be free to do these things. And like I said, this is just a precursor for what's going to come for what is not accepted and what we as Christians should not be partaking in because these things came from the kingdom of darkness. So what were these men doing? Just like what's happening in Sodom and Gomorrah. These men were there to have sex with another man, to commit sodomy. I put up this definition before. The sodomy is anal or oral sex. And it doesn't just mean man on man or woman on woman. It is man with woman, whatever it is, it's all the same. But sodomy was happening here. Rape was happening here. And they were bold with any newcomer that came into that area had to be <laughs> broke in, if I can say that. You know, this is how bold they were, just like in Sodom and Gomorrah. And Sodom and Gomorrah did not know God. And so they took these practices from these places and brought them into the kingdom of God. Things that they learned from the people that walked in darkness that were doing things to worship other gods. And like I said, in the next one, we're going to get into the specifics of these false god and goddess worships that involved all these sexual practices. So stay tuned for the next one. And 
so after all this happens, this Levite priest has cut up this poppy, concubine's body, sent them out. They try and talk sense into the tribe of Benjamin. They're like, release the men that did this to his concubine. But Benjamin refused to release that man because they're going to defend the sin that they think is right. So they're like, no, we're not going to release them. And so now all the other tribes of Israel come together to go to war against Benjamin. And, and get this, Benjamin beats them the first two times that they attempt to go to war. They're sending out different tribes. The first tribe that they sent was the tribe of Judah. And I looked up some stuff on this. There was a reason for everything. God sent the tribe of Judah first and did not tell them that they would win, but only told them, yes, go, go up against them. But God never said, you're going to win this battle. Judah was where the prostitution was happening. That was where the concubine was from and it was being supported. So that's one of the things. So Judah went up first, they lost. The next tribe that went up was Dan. Dan lost because Dan had the idol that they had signed a Levite priest to. And so it wasn't until the third round where the people went on their face praying and fasting that they actually beat the tribe of Benjamin. And so you think of it, these other tribes are trying to come against the sin that's in Benjamin while they haven't even dressed their own sin. They're blind to their own sin. They hadn't taken the log out of their eye to see their own sin. And so they're trying to discipline their brother while they haven't even cross-examined themselves. And so tens of thousands died during this battle and they almost wiped Benjamin completely out. There was only a small group of men that was left and they had to find wives for them because they had basically wiped out the whole tribe of Benjamin. So that was the result of them going to war. So this was just part one of worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. A woman was raped to death and dealt with coldly by a Levite priest. They had no business having one in the first place, going into a tribe that is clearly overrun with homosexual activity, rape, sodomy, and everything else. I can't even imagine what they did to this poor woman that she literally died. I just have this picture of her just blood everywhere, just beaten and abused. I don't even want to picture it, but anyway, so yeah. So this is part one. Stay tuned for part two because it's going to get even more graphic with what was being done in Israel. And this one at Bel Peor is before they made it into the promised land. God was so gracious and merciful with them. They were doing the most. And let's not forget the golden calf where they started dancing naked and doing all kinds of stuff while Moses was up there getting the Ten Commandments. It's just so much stuff. But once so we can get an idea of where we got our sex practices from and what's okay with God and what's not okay. So let's go through these. And then the one after this will be us seeing what is permitted and what's not permitted. Is it the truth that the marriage bed is undefiled or can it be defiled? We'll see. Stay tuned. Thanks for listening in. Like and subscribe. Leave comments. Tell what you think. If anyone's heard of this before, just leave comments. Anyways, thanks. Love you all. Be blessed.